And for more on what's making news on Capitol Hill, Olivia Beavers joins us now. She covers Congress for Politico and is one of the nation's top reporters on Congress. Olivia, thanks for being here, for joining us. Let's start with the state of play inside Congress. You are mm -hmm. someone who really understands the dynamics. And as we look ahead to the midterm elections, but also to January 2023, when there will be a new Congress, maybe the Democrats in control, maybe not, uh, we're going to potentially see some new players in the leadership. We all know House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is eyeing the speakership should the Republicans win the majority. What's his standing right now with his own Republican members? Is that gavel guaranteed for him should Republicans win the majority? Hi, Robert. Thank you for having me on. There are no guarantees in politics, as we all know, but McCarthy is looking as safe and as likely as possible for ascending to the speakership. You know, I was trying to talk to actually Freedom Caucus members today, and they were part of the reason that he lost his bid for the gavel in 2015. And it, at the moment, it doesn't seem like there's actually any efforts underway to mobilize any sort of campaign against him, which is a pretty important fact uh, as we look ahead. But, you know, next week, Republicans are actually rolling out this framework that they're hoping to use on the campaign trail. And they're modeling it after Newt, Gingrich, Newt Gingrich's contract with America, and they're calling it commitment to America. And so they're trying to pull together the Republican conference, get people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and the more moderate members like Don Bacon together and saying this is the plan that we want to present to the voters going forward. Has McCarthy consolidated this, the Freedom Caucus and other conservative groups around him inside of the House? And if so, how has he done that? He, one of the biggest steps he took, and I hear it all the time from House Republicans, was his decision, and it was a pretty risky gamble, if you know sort of the back history of Kevin McCarthy and Congressman Jim Jordan, is he decided to put Jim Jordan as the top Republican on the House Judiciary Committee, giving a Freedom Caucus member a lot of power and a big platform. And this has really helped him with a group that has historically sort of always been a thorn in his side and always a threat to his rise in leadership. Now, they're not going to be a group of Republicans who will be vocal about their support, but at the moment, I'm hearing from at least some of them that say McCarthy, more than any of the GOP leaders in the past, has worked to build up their relationships and assure them that they have some sort of influence or say in this upcoming Congress, especially if they win the majority. But as you said, in politics, Olivia, there are no guarantees. <laughs> and let's say the Democrats do better than expected. And we see mm -hmm. abortion rights now rising as an issue, activating many Democratic voters, according to our latest CBS News battleground tracker poll of Pennsylvania. We see Democrats winning some special elections. Suppose Democrats do better than expected. They win the House majority or the Republicans only win a very, very mm -hmm. narrow House majority. Does that change the dynamic in the sense of McCarthy potentially facing a threat come later this fall? You, you put your, uh, your finger on it, Robert. So what happens if there's a small majority is that the smaller the majority, the more risky McCarthy's rise to the speakership is. Uh, you know, if he doesn't win the majority, I think that there's going to be a lot of out, people who are out for blood for among the top leadership dais. But if he does win and it's narrow, then you're giving people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, and sort of the people who are not usually siding with him on issues much a much bigger say. And that is a risk in terms of if someone wants to pop up and challenge him uh, and say that, you know, they didn't win as many seats when they really should have in a, in a you know, a cycle where they thought they were going to have, at one point they were talking about 40 to 50 seats that they were hoping to win in this cycle. And now, as you said, with the Supreme Court rolling and abortion front and center, it does not appear like it will be that big of a sweep that they thought. So who else would be in contention? If people really should know who's in this roster of potential people who could be Speaker of the House of Representatives, such a major constitutional position in our country. Uh, would it be Steve Scalise from Louisiana, the number two House Republican, Elise Stefanik, the Trump ally, who's also in the leadership? Uh, or could it be someone who's a little bit more unknown nationally, like Jim Banks from Indiana, the head of the, the conservative Republican Study Committee? Based on your reporting, mm -hmm. should the Republicans stumble uh, in November, who would be next in line? 
It's tough to say. There is a sense that if McCarthy stumbles, some of his allies might, you know, try to kneecap someone if they think that they're trying to be too thirsty, and that would be a big powerful contingency. But as you said, Steve Scalise, he's the number two. Um, you know, it, there's we've long had the belief that he's interested in, in rising up as well. Lee Stefanik uh, is ambitious and she has a growing support within the conference. And, you know, she just announced that she's going to run for the, the, the messaging role next Congress. And there's a belief that she has had her eye in rising up, um, but how she wants to rise up is up for debate. Uh, I've actually heard Jim Jordan's name. I don't know if it's a position that he would want, but he is someone who went from being quite detested in the conference outside of the Freedom Caucus to working with freshmen and, and crossing the aisle in terms of how he started doing outreach as soon as he got more of a powerful position within the conference. But it's really tough to say just who would be rising up right now. Um, at the moment, McCarthy just looks so unchallenged. but. There are um, probably a whole slate of names if they ever thought that there was an opportunity to sweep in if, if it wasn't working out for him. Olivia, you also recently spoke with McCarthy about <laughs> his view of the Capitol riot January 6th, including the, you discussed that leak audio of him criticizing and talking about former President Trump at that moment. Mm -hmm. What was his answer for how he responded to January 6th, especially in those recorded calls? Well, so I only caught him for a very tiny bit of time, but I asked him, uh, you know, about the recordings that caused a series of headaches for him earlier this year, and he was saying, you know, Trump bore some responsibility. He said he didn't like the incendiary language that he heard from some of his members. He also raised con security concerns for how some of his members had conducted themselves related to... Uh, you know, events leading up to the actual attack on the Capitol, uh, including giving speeches right outside um, nearby. But he uh, he told me, and it, it, it appears it was a leak from a pretty tightly held conference call with top staff and top Republican leaders. And he tells me that he knows who recorded it. And mm -hmm. at some point, he's going to release that name. He would not tell me who, despite repeatedly asking and pushing. But it looks like he's not done yet, sort of with a saga that at one point caused pretty, pretty severe migraines for him. Well, you, you and I it. are going to be both competing to uh, find out that <laughs> name. Uh, we sure one are. final thing here, Olivia. On the Democratic side, Speaker mm -hmm. Pelosi has been a little bit coy about whether she will seek the speakership again or the leadership again mm -hmm. post the November elections. What, what's your reporting on her political position with Democrats? You know, Pelosi is very powerful. There, uh, there's a. There seems to be a sense that this might be her final term, but you know she's not done until she's done. And if she decides to seek another uh, speakership, she will. She's she's sort of that person who has had a strong command of her caucus for a long time. That's not to say that you won't have some other ANSI members. And I think you're starting to see names percolate of those who are expressing or signaling interest in a sign that, you know, they're preparing just in case she does decide to leave after this Congress, after this term. Olivia Beavers, thank you. Thank you, Robert.